All right. Welcome, everybody. This is Brian Johnson, and here's another episode for Under the Canopy. So today I'm actually talking with Barack Yoga with Forsket. And what we're talking about today specifically is for those of you who are using or need or uh, looking for a replacement regarding uh, freight forwarding and services, a lot of you have had brought to me a lot of questions regarding uh, the challenges that you've run into this year in 2021 regarding trying to get shipments from your manufacturer to an Amazon FBA warehouse. And so we're going to talk about some of the, the issues there and also kind of give you some solutions as far as how to work around some of the common, common problems so that you've got a competitive edge. We're not talking about, uh, you know, how do we reduce ship time, reduce ship costs to some alternative methods to consider some alternative services that you may want to consider from that may be available from freight forwarders such as Barack's company. And we'll get into that more and come up with some solutions for you. So first of all, let me introduce uh, Barack. Uh, you're with Force Get. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Brian, for inviting me here. Absolutely. Uh, can you give us a little bit of background as far as yourself and your journey, as well as your company? Yes, of course. Um, it's a pleasure to be here, first of all, when I met you for the first time in Prosper uh, a couple of weeks ago. I told you you're one of my heroes in the Amazon industry. When I started this five, six years ago, you were one of the first person, actually, I was like following, you know, your company, your, your software. So it's really amazing to be here together. I have to tell this first. Nice. Um, um, and I'm not paid for that, just for FYI, you know, it's my own personal opinions. Um, yeah, when it comes to the freight international logistics, um, I lived in China seven years. Uh, I moved to uh, US, so now we have an office in Miami, Florida. Uh, it's been almost like three years. You know, before pandemic, I used to be back and forth like two, three times a year. Unfortunately, I cannot travel back to Asia like most of us. You know, uh, we're really missing out a lot of trade shows, great networking events factory visits or, you know, all sort of connection, networking, traveling, uh, business as well as pleasure. Uh, but it's still not bad to be in Miami, honestly, in this time. Um, lived in China seven years, uh, have a bachelor degree in international business. But, you know, what I studied in school, what I learned in Asia was completely different things. So it's been like really great experience. Uh, I've met amazing people in my life. Um, Maybe visited more than 400, 500 different factors. I think, um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about that also today, you know, about the sourcing, the supplier side, the payment option. So when you say actually international freight, international logistics, if we were having this conversation maybe two years ago before pandemic, things would, would, have, would have been easier. Like, you know, we could just tell people maybe about like trade terms, you know, how to ship by ocean, how to ship by air. Everybody would probably know about it. Everybody had like a already uh, freight forwarder they're working with, or maybe they work with the factories directly. But now, <clears throat> today's world, every day, things changing, not only for Amazon FBA sellers, but, but the entire e-commerce. So we are trying to, you know, uh, we we're trying to do our best to uh, custom made options uh, for our customers, uh, for the shipments, for the warehouse. So that's what we are working on. We're a young and boutique company that specialize in e-commerce and Amazon sellers. So we pretty much know every day, you know, we talking to our customers and we know what they're going through. So I think we're gonna have like more and more details today about the challenges that FBA sellers or like e-commerce sellers are facing every day. Awesome. Well, and then one of the reasons why I wanted to get Barack um, back on here is that we actually had a conversation um, uh, last week, I think it was, um, where we discussed a lot of these things. I want to make sure that we, we did it more formally here for everybody listening here. Um, now, it, it's a true statement is that not every freight forwarder is the same, just like any agency, any service. So there's different levels, different types, different qualities of uh, services out there, including in the freight and forward side. Um, so I kind of want to go through some some common questions that were asked of me, and I'm going to put those on you and see uh, kind of challenge you to uh, to to respond to each one of these um, to see how do you uh, what's your belief in this and how does your company handle it. Um, obviously, this year with uh, we're seeing some dramatic increases in costs and shipping delays coming from uh, 
from international manufacturers, especially out of China, um, trying to get into the States. And then a lot of bottlenecks, a lot of ports getting clogged up right now. Okay. So it's a, it's a, it's a very serious problem. I think we've seen, here's an example. Now, maybe you can kind of fine tune my, what I'm going to say here is that I know for my own containers, I've seen costs go from about three to $4,000 um, up to uh, over twenty thousand um, in in recent months, even I know, so crazy. The, the shipping costs have gotten insane. What are some of the ranges that you've been seeing as far as like either like a twenty or forty foot container being shipped from a manufacturer? Um, honestly, it, it it really varies. Um, yesterday, actually, I was with one of our upcoming friend Carlos Carlos Alvarez. Uh, he was talking about like he heard that uh, someone closed a booking. Uh, for $27,000. I'm like, that's insane. You know, a year ago, uh, two years ago, I think the full container shipping from, uh, let's say, Ningbo Port or Shanghai to uh, Auckland or Long Beach was like between $3,000 to $4,000. And we have this uh, dramatic increase, as you mentioned. Uh, now we're actually getting the real bookings between around $18,000 to $20,000. And some of the ports like you know we also work to uh, Miami it's very difficult to find a space for the east coast for you know from China uh, New York is a little bit easier but I think Miami is a little smaller maybe demand is uh, the supply is not big enough but there's a lot of demand because uh, a lot of companies they cannot ship to the west coast there are a lot of problems with congestions by the port it's even difficult to find a truck in California right now it used sure. we used to pay for a dryage base for a full container was around $800 to $900. Now it goes up to like $1,400, $1,500. And most of the truck companies do not want to deliver to Amazon directly. That's another a serious problem because, you know, we all love Amazon. You know, we all make money with Amazon. But on the other hand, there are some things that uh, it's not working out that well, you know, because the demand is so big, even if, Amazon expanding the warehouse, num the number of warehouses increasing like every week, every two weeks maybe, uh, but still there's not enough capacity <clears throat> to deliver all those, all those shipments to Amazon. So it's even hard to find a carrier to deliver to uh, like Amazon directly. So basically shipping international and deliver to Amazon directly now, it looks like a mission impossible. The prices are really getting high, the delays, everybody's like really talking about what is the best way? How to optimize? Like what? Especially Q4 is coming, and you know the you know we're recording this on the like on the third of August. Uh, that two days ago, the Ningbo port uh, had a a, a a COVID positive case, so they shut down the entire operation, suspended right. like for for two weeks. So now yeah. we we learn that the, they have two independent ports. Only one of them was shut down, and another is still working. So we kind of start moving the containers to there. So, but that's the thing. Like you know, every day, even if you book a container for twenty thousand, and you're like, okay, whatever, I booked it. But then, oh, your container sits in the port like three weeks because they're, because of some some station happened. Like anybody's, like there's there's nothing you can control about that. There's nothing right. you can actually do on that you know so unfortunately well, that's the situation that we're dealing with every day in our yeah lives. no and, and i think a lot of the numbers that we throw around here um is that we've got um you know we're talking about as far as like a container being shipped across ocean you know basically ocean um container ship uh 20 foot 40 foot um and, and i kind of want to go back take a step back and go over some of the basics for those who are not currently shipping at that level yet but um will be um, just to kind of like bring them up to speed as far as like what uh, some of the terminology is, the sizes, the capacities, the, the average shipping times, if you have some of that uh, information. And then we can talk about like, okay, now what do we do about some of these challenges? Because a lot of what we're throwing around here in discussion um, in the Amazon community is like, oh yeah, you know, $20,000, you know, container. It's like, but that's not your only cost. That's not your only delay. You have people who have their hands on multiple things, the, the, the trucking company, you know, inspection, you've got, um, you know, uh, regulatory, um, uh, you've got ports, you've got trucks, like you said, all these things get involved here and they add on cost and they add on time. And that's on top of just a standard, you know, what it costs to ship the container by itself. Right. 
let's let's take a step back here and talk about a couple of the things here is like we don't need to cover like all the different shipping terms right, right? The, typically, that typically we would uh, as a brand we'd be having a conversation with a manufacturer and they right. say well okay what kind of shipping do you want you know uh, what is would you say is the most popular versus it may be the same versus what do you recommend as far as the shipping terms that you have with a manufacturer um, you know, when you place an order, most of the factories, they either offer FOB, uh, free on board, which means um, the, your manufacturer, it doesn't matter where are they located in Turkey, India, China, <clears throat> the manufacturer, if it is FOB price term, which means the supplier is responsible, all the local charge and local fees, uh, such as, you know, truck from factory to the port, uh, you know, custom clearance in the, uh, in the origin, uh, could be uh, X-ray, could be some custom clearance, a brokerage fee. So your supplier is responsible for that. But if you think that, oh, great, I receive an FOB price. Um, so, you know, and then my supplier is paying all those fees, but it doesn't mean that your supplier is actually adding that up to their actual cost. So actually they added up that cost. So some suppliers like that a little bit more, some suppliers just add actual cost. So normally I prefer to ask every time, we're gonna place some order for, let's say for our customers where we're helping or we have other customers in the different industries. Uh, we like to get the both prices. Like, so please offer me EXW, please offer me FOB. And what I see in China recently is they, they're actually offering the same price. They don't wanna really make a difference. They don't wanna make a calculation, cost calculation. So they just go with the uh, same price, FOB and EXW. And when it comes to the EXW, it means that you just pay for the manufacturing cost and now you're responsible right after the, sh the goods leave the factory's door. So you're right. responsible every, every charge. Let's say you have a full containers. You know, when we were talking a couple of days ago, uh, I mentioned that I like to be like specific instead of talking like general information. Let's say uh, you manufacture uh, 5,000 microphones and then the unit cost is $8. This is FOB Ningbo. So for full container, let's say you can fit like 5,000 units inside. So it's like, it makes it $40,000, the, the manufacturing cost. So basically you're looking at almost like $1,200 to $1,400 local charges, include the custom clearance, uh, includes the paperwork, including the truck from the, the factory to, uh, right. the, the, the desk, uh, to the port. So something between like, I would say 900 to $1,200. So if you calculate that, that the price so probably you're looking at around like 10 cent additional fee to your actual cost maybe that's not really big cost in four thousand five thousand units but what would you what if you manufacture only 500 right and you're going to have probably 300 to 400 dollar uh local charges for that kind of quantity and then it's going to bring at like 60 cents maybe so difference between agreeing on the EX7 and FOB sometimes again two years ago we, you wouldn't really make maybe that kind of small tiny calculation because everybody had like a better ROI everybody had enough margins to you know compete the, have a coupon like more PPC yep. budget but now even the PPC cost what we hear is actually going a cost is going higher because there's a big competition I'm talking about let's say US marketplace yeah um yeah, so margins are definitely is, shrinking, and this is definitely contributing to that. Yeah, so this is like a little bit outside of logistics, but, but when you, especially if you're a new Amazon seller or if, or if you're launching a new product, you're trying to launch a new product, you know, you were talking about the cost, but if you're lucky enough to send all your inventory to Amazon directly, then you don't have other costs. But I would say like 90% of our customers, they're like, you know, six, seven, eight figure sellers. They don't have that kind of limits. So they have a big amount of sales. So what they need to do right. is they manufacture the product, they ship it to a third party warehouse, and there's an extra cost on that. The storage, in and out cost. Uh, we have a warehouse in California. We have a warehouse in New Jersey. Our price is very competitive, but still it's a cost for some, some companies. <clears throat> so, so I think if you want to be... Uh, stay on top of the competition really everybody has to do a better breakdown of their cost uh the shipping price is not going anywhere where we were two years ago anytime soon probably we're looking at uh going back to normals uh maybe around february or march 2022 uh after the chinese new year but before that four quarters coming the demand is very high 
there's not enough supply. So unfortunately, I don't think the price is going to go anywhere lower than where we are right now. Okay, so let's talk I, about- I would like, love to give you better news, guys, but I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let me, let, let's talk about as far as like some of the biggest costs along this whole path, regardless of whether or not you use, um, like say a door to door service, whether or not you pick it up from, you know, uh, pick it up from the manufacturer versus have them do some of the shipping. The big cost typically involved on this is getting from the manufacturer um, to the ports if you're doing ocean container, right? right. Or to the airport. Now, I, I do, I am kind of curious as far as like if you've seen as far as how how air freight compares to ocean freight right. for those of you may those may be going from smaller quantity uh sure. pallet size over to you know small container large container um uh, let's let's but you've got going from the manufacturer to uh the port or you know whether that's an airport or a shipping port you've got the the cost of that transportation whether that's air or sea You've got the cost of probably getting it through uh, customs custom. and any kind of custom du customs duties. Yeah. You've got the fees that, as far as from that port, probably to get it onto the truck. Right. Yeah. You got you got fees that basically go from getting the truck out to probably, as you mentioned, to your own third party warehouse, right? The three PO right. warehouse. And then, of course, you've got the cost of getting it from your own warehouse or your own intermediary warehouse over to. Um, to an Amazon FBA center. Did I miss any of the major costs involved there? No, no, that's that's pretty much it. But everything is uh, so unpredictable and it's getting expensive to do international shipping. <clears throat> As you mentioned, you know, you start doing maybe slow air freight and then uh, maybe slow the sea and then you start seeing your, your shipments are getting better because, you know, four cars coming, you don't want to be outside of, out, you don't want to be out of stock. So you want to plan everything good. And you have to manufacture enough amount of quantity and then ship it on time. And you always want everything to get there fast. So all those costs, correct. But as a company, what we do is maybe some of the uh, listeners heard about this way of shipping. We call it DDP, which means due to delivery paid. I think that's something that e-commerce sellers and Amazon sellers, they, they hear a lot from you know, the suppliers or maybe from their friends. You know, the Amazon company, people like to talk to each other. So... <clears throat> If you have like a smaller amount of shipments, let's say 300 kilos or like 500 kilos, 1,000 kilos, not the full container because that's not always the case, but we are offering a DDP, which means actually a fixed uh, price per kilogram. So that way you can actually know your uh, exact cost, shipping costs from either shipping from your supplier to FBA warehouse or shipping from uh, from your manufacturer to your third party or our warehouse. So we, as a company, we have a very uh, transparent pricing policy that we supported with the you know digital platform that I mentioned that, you know, you can track your shipments online, see your occupation online, pay your invoices online. Uh, it's important for most of the small sellers and mid-sized sellers to use DDP service. That helps, but unfortunately you cannot get this uh, payment like this shipping term when you place an order to your supplier. So it doesn't matter whether you do uh, EXW or FOB. What I mentioned, DDP, if people didn't hear about it, they could actually uh, type it and read it what it is. It's DDP means due to delivery paid. So basically, we have our own containers shipping from, let's say, from China to California, and we have a lot of sellers that they have small shipments. So we consolidate those products in our one full container. We do the shipping, we do custom clearance, we do uh, dispatch in the destination. So that makes it very easy for a lot of Amazon sellers <clears throat> because even if you're a big seller, one day you might have, oh, you know, I need this shipment immediately send it to this location. Or maybe you start sending on a new marketplace that it doesn't have an FBA start. Let's say you start on the Wayfair or Etsy. So basically that is uh, very important to understand that you should know your cost, shipping costs, and then understand what is the best way of shipping it. So this is a thing really important recently uh, to stay on top of the competition uh, price-wise and, you know, stock-wise, inventory-wise. What, um, what, 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 a what are we expecting um, these days? Let's let's take an example scenario going from a China a Chinese manufacturer. Now, 
there's always that question, especially for new sellers, is they they don't um, they're more hopeful than they are, you know, getting the answer that they really should be asking up front. And that is, it's not uncommon for a um, a Chinese manufacturer to say, "It's like, yep, we've shipped the product," when they really haven't shipped anything yet. They they basically have said, "Like, we're getting it ready in our warehouse, and we'll have it ready." You know, we'll probably ship it out next week, but they've already claimed it's like, you know, like, oh yeah, no, we already shipped it. Uh, when in fact they really haven't. Um, is that kind of a, assuming those kinds of, you know, you, you can't always predict as far as, because that's going to vary from one manufacturer to the next in my experience, but um, how long is it taking these days for a container to go from a China port to, well, let's, let's, let's take the whole thing just kind of speculate here from a manufacturer to an Amazon FBA warehouse. You know, we have to back up a little bit even more. Uh, it, it even takes time now to get the release and booking the container. Maybe that's a little bit too much technical information right. for people, but we have one uh, important customer, uh, you know them, um, they have an amazing podcast and then they just sent an email uh, a couple of days ago that their four quarter inventory is going to be ready the first week of September. This is a great timing because you don't want to tell me that you have a shipment ready tomorrow and some <clears throat> new and unexperienced sellers, inexperienced sellers, uh, they're like, oh, so can it depart tomorrow? Can it depart like next Saturday? I'm like, no, it cannot. I mean, you know, <clears throat> people think that as soon as their shipment is ready, we're going to pick up and the next day it's going to be on the vessel. It's, it's not right. working out that way. It never worked out this way, but even it's, it's even harder now. <clears throat> even if we have reserves for every week depart, but there's already like, you know, uh, some shipments are waiting to be loaded. So I strongly recommend people to let their freight forward at least two weeks in advance. Otherwise, uh, it's not realistic to expect to depart on time and uh, you know, especially four quarters coming, things are going to get even worse, I believe, especially if there are like more cases in China that which we hear that start having like more cases. What happened in Ningbo? We had the same issue like six weeks ago in Shenzhen, Yantian port, and then the port was suspended like two full weeks. So it's very important to uh, book the space, get the pricing two weeks in advance. Sometimes price change and people need to know that like, unfortunately, price updates every week. Uh, two years ago, the price was valid like the entire month. But now you want to, let's say this morning you sent me a booking. We informed the customers, yes, we are going to do our best to keep this price, but price might update because the space sold out so fast that no one can actually hold the space. Right. So this is, this is number one. Number two, uh, we are dealing with congestions. Um, and right now people actually can Google and see in the West Coast on Long Beach and Oakland ports, they start the, the carriers like, you know, uh, like Costco, Evergreen, uh, Zim, MSC. These, these companies start charging congestion fees per container, like between right. $1,200 to $3,000, which we kind of like never the, uh, the airlines uh, when, when, they, when the fuel got really expensive, right. you know, airlines. Full surcharge, yeah would charge yeah basically yeah. fuel surcharges yeah but we never we never see that with the containers actually before so everybody's like wow that's getting expensive uh right. they're burning fuel we... to, to park out in the ocean <laughs> yeah i mean i mean yeah i mean that's like something like who's supposed to pay that like you know <laughs> I'm like, you <laughs> my customer's like why i'm paying for it i'm like i don't know like you know that's the shipping line is charging so that's something it's kind of everybody's playing with everybody's playing the same game we're all on the same boat and this is something we have to do with. So like, it's good to tell people in advance because some of the sellers just like being very positive. Oh, it's okay. You know, I'm just going to launch this product. But have you actually, have you done your math? Does it make sense to launch this product or does it make sense to continue this, this product? You know, a lot of people, they like their product. They've spent so much time, two months, three months, you know, for photography, videos, listing optimization, PPC, it takes really time, like people spending thousands of dollars on manufacturing, shipping, and then what happens if you don't make the cost calculation, right? You know, so it makes no sense to come to you. So that's very important. I'm sorry, I didn't answer your question exactly. No, no, no but, but, but I kind of, I mean, like, like, okay, so when is it too late, do you think, for an, a typical 
seller to expect to have it like when, when the order is ready from a manufacturer in order to get it to, to FBA, have, have, has their time already expired? In other words, in order to get it in for fourth quarter for, let's say, uh, mid-November for, uh, you know, Black Friday, have we already passed that time? Um, if you have a ready shipment today, let's say today is uh, 15th of August, <clears throat> the best scenario, it's going to take 10 days for the shipment departs from the port, the best case. Just to get the out worst, of the port. Yeah. Yes, just to okay. get out of the port. So let's say we already have a space, we book it, we load it, it's going to be 10 days. So what you're looking at around 20, to, like some of the vessels like taking different port has different sailing time, but I'll say average, let's say 25 days, 22 to 25 days. So you start counting 10 days until load, but I would say 15 days because there are a lot of delays. So I tell you the worst, yeah. I don't know, be positive, but like prepare, get ready, prepare for the worst. You know? No, so no, I, I want the reality here. I, I want the hard truth. I, want, I would say like two weeks from the day your shipment is ready, unless you book it in advance. If you let me know three you 14 ago, days. If you, you, if you, let, me know, if you let me know today is the shipment ready, two weeks until it departs. Okay. And then you're looking at another 20 to 22 days sailing time. Okay, got it. All right. And then that's just you're lucky enough, time to get to the next port. Yes. And then, like port. you said, now we're talking about the USA. UK takes 30 days, for example. Wow. Okay. Yes. So we're talking about the West Coast. So from China to West Coast, Long Beach or Oakland around like, you know, 20 to 22 days. The New York, Miami around 30 to 32 days. Got it. And these containers, container vessels, like container ships, they're not going directly. They have connections in different ports. Let's say in it goes to, you know, same as the airplane. It goes to, let's say, Korea, exchange some containers, and then it goes to the next port. So yep. there's a congestion in Korea, let's say, and you cannot do anything. You have to wait maybe two weeks that the container leaves. So I'm, tell, I'm talking about like a general uh, sailing time, 25 days, I would say. And then if you're lucky enough, there's no congestion in the port, the drive support, unloading, uh, now, like the backlog around like 10 to 12 days now in each port. <clears throat> so the average delay is around 10 to 12 days. Okay. And then unloading, uh, the container becomes available in the, uh, the, port, the port, in the terminal. <clears throat> we arrange the pickup. So 15 days until the port, let's say 20 to 25 days sailing time. Uh, the time it spends in the port, like, you know, unloading, custom clearance, finish, pick up around seven days. Yeah. And then delivers to the warehouse in, let's say, two to three days. So I would say around 10 days until it arrives to the destination. So 10 days plus 20 days plus another 10 days. So you were looking actually 40 days. Minimum 40 days. I would say, yes, 35 to 45 days between but if you plan everything better, the way my customer just did with us, three weeks in advance, so you say my shipment is going to be ready September 5th, I can book the space on the 10th of September departure vessel. <laughs> so this right. way I can save that 10 days to four days. So basically okay. they're, saving, they're saving at least one week to book the space in advance. Okay. It could be sometimes so, even more because probably in September and October, there's going to be like more shipments. So there's going to be actually more waiting time in the 10 days, the 15 days. Okay. So let's say, let's say you got a minimum 40 days uh, ocean ship. You have probably a minimum, let's say you're talking about a, I don't know what the most common is, probably a 40 foot container is probably the most common. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Total end to end cost roughly would be minimum. Uh, to West Coast from China, from Shanghai, or from Ch Shenzhen is a little cheaper. Like right now, you're looking at around sixteen to seventeen thousand dollars from Shenzhen to Long Beach right. or Auckland. From uh, Ningbo or Shanghai, you're looking at something nineteen thousand dollars. The the range goes between eighteen thousand five hundred to twenty thousand. Whether whether you can book the space or not, or how fast you need the space. Okay. Well, so, so for people, example, I heard they say, pay twenty four thousand dollars this week. To New let's York. say eighteen thousand, but then you also have the, co the additional truck fee, custom clearance, the duty. Uh, you know, everything, every every product has a different duty. Some of the shipments have uh, twenty five percent, the extra tariff from China. Some of them like seven percent. 
So one of our customers are uh, uh, importing, let's say, frames or the pictures. They have like 25 0% tax, but 25% additional uh, additional like the tariff uh, from China. Uh, that's on the value of the should, of the item. Yeah, if you say the $40,000 dollars shipment, so basically you're paying $9,000 dollars the duty. Every, every product is different though. But yeah. actually, fixed cost is around like 18,000, 19,000 plus a truck, the customers. You're looking at something 20, 21,000 like plus duty. <clears throat> but if you have a smaller shipment, let's say you want to do CDDP, the one we are offering, you know, uh, for a smaller shipment, you're looking between 2.6 to $3 per kilogram price range. You're Got it. At the moment. Okay. So if you have 1,000 kilogram, you're basically going to pay something between 27, 2,600 to 3,000. Uh, dollars include everything so that's the that's a good part for a lot of small fba sellers to use this ddp service okay let's talk a little bit as far as like the value of what freight forwarding does now does forescape also have um inspection services or is that separate it's it's not our core business but we help sometimes to our existing uh customers about that inspection is very important because especially if it's a new product uh, you receive the sample everything looks good but you want to see actually what happened with the mass production because you will not see that product it goes to it goes to directly to amazon so you definitely want to do a final inspection before the shipment mass shipment leaves the uh -huh. factory and some of the customers i don't know why people do that they do inspection when it comes to the you know, the destination. Some of the customers want to ship the product to themselves and then inspect it, but it's, it's, it's too late. I mean, you cannot too late, yeah. re return the product back to the factory if you find a major problem. I think spending that $150 to $200 is the, the smartest thing you can actually spend the money on. Like, yeah, and then for inspection. those of you who didn't hear that, what, what Brock was saying is like, make sure that you do the inspection first and foremost, make sure you do it at the manufacturer. Yes. Not in the shipping process, certainly not at the destination. It's got to be done at the manufacturer. Otherwise, they can't do anything we, about it. You know what? We even send an inspector uh, before you start an order because you want to see and you want to send someone and inspect the factory, whether they do a good job. It's a big enough factory. They have quality control, really, or which companies, who are the uh, other companies they are working with? <clears throat> you know, you want to yeah. see all these kind of things. It happened to me four or five years ago. We were going to place an order from a factory. You know, we found them in Alibaba back then. I didn't really know where to look. And then we found an Alibaba. I was like, okay, seven, eight years, gold member. Uh, now I understand that Alibaba actually never sent really people to check those factories. Um, <clears throat> people are like, what? Really? Uh, it happens. Sometimes. <laughs> so you definitely want to do some, you know, third party inspection on Alibaba. I went to the factory and then the salesperson was seven months old pregnant. The, the finance manager was the owner of the factory's wife and the, the, the owner of the factory was on a golf trip. I'm like, so what, what is going to happen two months from now when my order finished? So who I'm going to speak with? You know, that's very important. Some yeah, people, you don't know. Think that, yeah. You know, you don't know because, you know, everybody's like, you know, working with Alibaba. They're like, oh, I'm going to pay with Alibaba. It's safe. But actually, you have to have a better understanding who are you working with, especially if you're placing an order, like I would say more than $10,000, $15,000. If you work for the first time, I lived in China, I've seen so many crazy things. I'm like, wow, I can't believe that this actually, this is a factory. Like, you know, this is basically a small workshop <laughs> working two people, but they put the picture of like another factory, Photoshop it, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. I don't want to blame, yeah, it's not the same. I'm not, I'm not saying this, everybody's doing this. Everybody's a scammer or something like that. No, I'm just it, saying it's, it's just a different place in order. Just be careful who you work with and make your homework, you know? Yeah, it, it's a different perspective of, of what we hope is happening and what standards that we expect as a brand owner, as somebody who, you know, is ordering from a manufacturer. But the fact is that one of the reasons why you get such uh, inexpensive pricing for manufacturing is because they're not at the same standard that you might see in your local area as far as manufacturing and commercial buildings and these kinds of things. That's one of the reasons it's not just labor, but it's everything that is involved around manufacturing. Now, somehow they still get the product out, but that's exactly one of the reasons why we're both saying like inspection services are worth it. I, I got complacent. Um, and just because I wanted to save time, I skipped the inspection process on, I think it was probably the third or fourth 
um, run that I had from a manufacturer. And of course it was that run that had probably 20% of the product wow. had problems and I had to destroy it. That is not a problem that you want to experience. It, I could have easily solved that problem had I simply just said, you know what, I'm going to eat the time. I'm going to eat the small cost to have the inspection done uh, so that I don't have, so it doesn't cause me problems in the future. I highly recommend it. Um, and like you Brian, said, obviously if, you've got to. <laughs> if people if people cannot uh, maybe afford the inspection or they cannot find someone to send it, uh, definitely at least ask for a video call with your supplier and ask them to pick some random box and open and show it to you. At least That's at least great. do that. But, you know, just don't take pictures. The manufacturer, like you know, the salesperson is just gonna go to the downstairs to the warehouse, maybe open one box, and then she's gonna pick the right box, and then just gonna send the picture. You don't know. You wanna do a FaceTime or like you know WeChat or Skype call, whatever. <clears throat> WhatsApp is not working really in China, but uh, definitely video call could work. And say, hey, can you pick up that bottom second uh, box and just open it for me? At least yeah. do this like with regular four or five units, and if you see zero problem, then okay. Uh, but if you see one problem or small problems and each unit has different problem, that's something I would be scared of. But if two or three of the units have the same type of problem, that's something that I would be like really worried about it and definitely immediately stop the shipping, immediately stop paying the balance and do not do the inspection after you pay the balance <laughs> because your suppliers are not going to really be willing to do much. They're like, oh, we don't have space in the warehouse. Can you remove this? Okay, we're going to do that, change that. But they will change that they will fix that problem because they want to receive the balance payment. So these are small, small details, but important details. Yeah, that's, and that, that that's, makes like a whole, that's a whole discussion all by itself when it comes to best practices in manufacturing, some of the things to look out for, um, inspections and everything. But I kind of want to bring up the inspections as part of the whole shipping thing. Let's kind of shift, shift back over to the primary topic as far as logistics, as far as getting the product. Now... Those who haven't worked with a, a freight forwarder before, again, there's a variety of services available, qualities, um, capabilities. Um, I, I know certainly some of the feedback that I've gotten from, um, from clients and students that I've worked with uh, when it comes to freight forwarders is they basically have their common lists of things. Um, what I would like to do is, uh, there's a couple of things I still want to talk about here um, shortly with you. Those are, what are some ways to reduce the overall ship time? I know we discussed that previously as far as, uh, you know, things like fast, uh, fast lane. Um, I want to talk about, like, is there anything else to consider regarding reducing overall shipping costs um, that your service or a freight forwarder could provide? Um, and I know certainly communication was probably the biggest topic that I saw uh, the feedback on. That's something that you brought up as well that you um, that you're proud of with your team. Um, and then uh, and then we can kind of talk and then we will wrap up and talk about like uh, as far as your company, what sets you apart from others. So let's jump in and talk about uh, the communication side of the, the house. Some of the things that I've, the feedback that I've gotten is, um, and I certainly can, can resonate, it resonates with me because I've had a lot of these same kind of things with freight forwarders and that is, uh, you know, poor response rate, you know, like just you're expecting to get an answer and, and they're like going, well, you know, they get back to you in a few days, um, delays that aren't explained or expected, uh, price changes. Um, that are either in, uh, implemented by the freight forwarder or somebody that the freight forwarder works with or maybe has no control over in some cases. Um, those kind of general, like we expect to get a heads up ahead of time so we're not surprised by it. How, what do you think as far as like um, your experience as far as like uh, what you've seen and and how do you try to work around that? How do you try to solve some of these communication and keeping the brand, uh, the brand client uh, aware of what is going on with this entire process? Um, I think it's very, very important to work or choose the freight forwarder that understands e-commerce business and Amazon FBA. That's the number one thing I, would, I think I would recommend because if you're a regular, like just a wholesale, or if you have a store that, you know, <clears throat> the worst thing you might say, oh, I'm sorry, uh, you have a regular customer. Of course, you don't want to upset a regular customer, but uh, they come and they don't find a product. 
you might offer them something else, maybe on site. <clears throat> but as an e-commerce or Amazon seller, every click, every session is very, very important. And every convert, like to convert that is very important. Yeah. Uh, people are maybe thinking about uh, why are you talking about that? Because we are talking about logistics. But <clears throat> if you don't work with the right freight forwarder, if they don't understand what you are doing or why you want to ship the product to three different locations or why they want to, or why you want to um, ship one place, unload the container and then uh, store it half of in the warehouse and some of them sent to Amazon FBA and you have to send them by UPS or, you know, LTL <clears throat> with the pallets. It's very important to understand you need to speak the same language, basically. I'm not talking about English, I'm not talking about French, but I'm talking about the, the you know, what we are actually trying to accomplish. You know, you want to ship some product from your manufacturer internationally to Amazon FBA warehouse as soon as possible, as cheap as possible. So you need to, when you work with the traditional freight forwarders, uh, let's say, you know, whatever the country they're located, it's important them to know actually what you're trying to accomplish. I think that's number one thing I would say. <laughs> Uh, another thing that is, I think, important here is like you mentioned timing and uh, communication, because most of the, uh, let's say, private seller products, they manufacture their product in China and they work with a Chinese freight forwarder. And let's say you and your partner are having a, a conversation today, okay, what we need to do with this shipment that's going to be manufactured and we're going to ship it here. Oh, we need to ship it to, let's say, Louisiana, but the container actually goes to California. So how are we going to get it in here? Until the time they wake up and start answering you who are specialized on FBA shipment, let's say you already forget that idea or you have to reconsider, you need to call your partner again. So I think it's important for a company like people who live or who work with the marketplace in the West Coast, like in the US, Canada, UK, Europe, to work with some freight forwarders in the destination. Okay. I've seen so many problems that my customers, they had before with their freight forwarders. Uh, you know, the lack of communication or the, there is no, or there are like some costs that are not included in the shipping price. And uh, when the shipment arrived to the destination, the freight for, oh, you know, we forget to add the destination charge. We forget to add the warehouse. So now That's as far as the way important. that you do business, you actually try to make sure that everything is identified and disclosed yes. ahead of time. Yeah. We, we, we ensure our customers that when we send you a quotation, even if there's $1 extra charge that we didn't inform you, you don't have to pay. That's our guarantee in the company. Thanks. And, I like that. and one that's the price transparency. And uh, if you are an Amazon FBA seller established store, you know, with the US entity, we give flexibility to, to make the payment after your shipment successful deliver to Amazon warehouse or our warehouse. So that's that gives <clears throat> that gives a lot of confidence for people to okay, I want to start working with this new company because they offer um, online tracking, uh, you know, communication in my local time because we are also in US, Europe, and in, in Asia. Uh, they can communicate with the local times and then more importantly, okay, the price is competitive and it's transparent. It's very important that we ensure our customers that there's not going to be extra charges whenever the shipment arrives to the port and stuff. So I very think good. that's important. So when you work with a freight forwarder, make sure 100% there's no extra charges. Uh, make sure uh, that, you know, you get updates on time. So that's another problem with Brian, when we talk about like, you know, the time difference, uh, you know, communication, not only that you're online or offline, but you want to know where's your shipment, when your shipment is going to arrive to the port. Again, you and me, we are having a, uh, you know, important business meeting today and we are like, okay, we have 500 units uh, inventory. What should we do? Should we have a coupon? Should we cut the PPC budget so we won't be outside of the, you know, we won't be out of stock inventory. I know that you're laughing because I, I know what you're talking about. It's very important in that day to actually make your uh, strategy. But if you don't know when your shipment has arrived to the port, you cannot really like, you have to delay that uh -huh. decision-making process. <clears throat> That's annoying for a lot of people because yeah, you no, want to have a meeting today and you're like, oh, when this shipment was arriving and then you're like, oh shit, uh, I need to wait my freight for the wake up in China. Okay, so let's yeah, kind of like over. Some, some downsides to work not with the local contacts, I would say. Got it. Okay, those are good uh, good differentiations. Uh, that's good to know, um, especially as far as some of the things that your company does different than a, a typical uh, freight forwarder. Let, let's talk a little bit as far as like, you know, I can, I can kind of hear, uh, you know, the buzz of sort of like, like why bother or even worse is, well, 
this is what I'm being told. So I just have to kind of like wait my time and pay the money, you know, the, the, it costs in order to get it. Um, what are some, what would you say to people who are thinking it's like, you know, well, this is what I'm told. I don't, there's no other options here because you, the conversation that you and I had previously talked about, um, using alternative methods of shipping. Um, is there a, a higher cost for door-to-door -door freight forwarding services versus, uh, just handling a single piece? What are some ways that, uh, that, that we need to know as sellers, um, what are some options that we should be asking about if we, if we're working with somebody already, what should we be asking? Or maybe we should reach out to your team and, and ask you is what are some ways that we can either, uh, speed up the shipping time, which is really important to me, especially when I'm running low in stock. Um, and then maybe secondarily, what are some ways to, to reduce, uh, overall shipping costs? So time first and then cost. Um, obviously, you know, when I mentioned their delays, their congestions, there's some things that we cannot actually control, but there are actually some things that we could analyze and understand which shipping line in the past had more delays, which shipping, which shipping lines actually deliver us faster. We have the data in our company about that. We have the monthly reports that because if you sign up to our website and go to forceget.com and sign up and you can see that uh, when you start a shipping with us, you will see the ETD estimated uh, departure time and ETA estimated, estimated arrival time. So we know every shipment it to, takes how long from the time that departs and it arrives. So we have the average of that number for each shipping line. So we kind of know, let's say Evergreen is delayed last one year, average like seven, eight days. So when we do the bookings, we're trying to go with the safer or, or the, <clears throat> the shipping line that has a better service. So this is one thing. Another thing is there's a shipping line that has a call like fast CDDP or fast shipping, which they have their own private PR in the destination. So sometimes we use that shipping line. The price is almost 15% more expensive, wow. but their service is actually faster than the any of your shipping line. Let's say you're shipping from Ningbo to Los Angeles or Ningbo to Oakland. Uh, this shipping line, uh, it takes 15 to 16 days without really any delay, 95 to 96% of the time. And the other shipping lines, let's say MSC or Evergreen, they have average of like 60% delays. <clears throat> so then you will make your own decision to see, hey, because you know sometimes you just ask them, I think, what kind of a time difference would that actually make going through the, the fast fast C? At least 10 days, 10 to 12 10 days. days. Wow. 10 to 12 days. But you said there's and, obviously a huge cost that you add on in order to get that kind of, it's yes. almost like the, the first yes, class. But, you know, <laughs> but that's something that if you can actually uh, compensate that fee with, you know, uh, maybe a stain in inventory or, you know, different, uh, maybe increase your price or whatever the strategy you actually had that moment, or maybe cut the coupon cost. <clears throat> what is your strategy? That it, it, make, it, it makes sense for a lot of sellers because people don't want to be out, out of stock. That's the thing, you know, they, they, they've been in this game like two, three years, they've been ranked well. And the last thing they want to do is go to the four quarter out of stock. So that's why it's, it, it's choices, you know, it depends on, uh, what are you trying to accomplish? Like, where are you? I heard that some people are using this. It's like Amazon's uh, international shipping line that they, they told me it takes like seven to to eight days to get the booking, and then shipping around like uh, you know another sixty days because they don't know where the container. So, like one of my customers told me it took them to get the container in 220 days, and they thought that the container was lost. And it took them like 10 days to get actually feedback, but the feedback was we are looking for it. So that's something you don't want to do because probably your worth of money, like $30,000 to $40,000 in that container, the turnaround time is like, how long is it going to be? Like eight months? Yeah, that brings, up, that brings up a good question. So it's like, if there is a problem, if there's some you know, issue with the container or its ability to get through customs or something like, do, does your company have the ability to step in and work on behalf of uh, of the brand and say, like, and try to mitigate that problem or try to troubleshoot that? Or do you, are you kept, are, are freight forwarders basically kept at arm's length from being able to, uh, 
to expedite a, a, a you know the solution you know a problem being solved when it comes to getting stuck in port. Are you talking about if we ship the content or some other company ship it to them, we kind of get in and help? Well, I mean, that's kind of your call. I mean, if you're if you're handling it from a service from, as a freight forwarder, um, does the freight forwarder typically have the ability to work with customs or the shipping line or something like that in order to mitigate generally, a problem? Generally, Brian, we would not really get involved if the shipment was uh, made by a different company. We had this in the past and then the shipping uh, the shipping, uh, the freight forwarder in China was kind of rude to me and said, Hey, you're not my customer. I don't have to explain you anything. I'm like, I'm, I'm this guy's partner, friend that, you know, you ship his cargo. It's been four months. Where is this shipment? He's like, I don't have to explain anything. And then, but he was not answering. I mean, she was not answering to my friend, my customer about that. Right. So this is a little hard for different freight forwarders to get involved. Uh, to some problem, but in case someone has like a massive problem, I'll try to help them, you know, without any expectation. Uh, I like helping people, but if it is, it, if it happens to us, you know, if we have an issue with, uh, you know, shipping line delays or the custom, we have reaction within 24 hours and then figure out what is a problem. And then we respond to our, we update our customers as soon as we have some updates because in right. our system, we track the shipments daily base. So if we know that there's a delay or if there's anything wrong, we inform the customer in our system. So that doesn't really happen to us, but you know it happens a lot in the industry, actually. So that's actually something that, that uh, brands should actually be aware of um, is what is the relationship between their, their freight forwarder and the shipping line that they're working with? Because if it's just a third party, then that, that freight forwarder service is not going to be able to do anything if something goes wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, okay. That's I, I, that, that makes, I mean, to me, that sounds, that sounds pretty clear now. Um, let's, cause I know we're, we're running along here. So I kind of want to get to the point here of like, how would you say that let's talk about a little bit as far as like your company, you already pointed out some of the things that you do above and beyond as far as your communication, as far as tracking, as far as uh, upfront quoting, as far as um, you know, end of shipment uh, payment, some of these things that, may not be available through uh, other other companies. Um, would you say that those are the things that uh, that really have, make Forsget stand out compared to similar services? Because you had mentioned door-to-door, for instance, for, uh, to me right. one, one point. Uh, I would say our response time to any press inquiry from our website or like, you know, people find our contact information and send us, text us, call us. Uh, our response time to any inquiry within two to four hours. It doesn't matter where, whether they're in UK. 24 seven. That's yeah. Yes. Correct. Wow. Two, okay. two, two to four hours response time. Hi, we receive your email. We're going to get back to you with the, with the pricing. So the pricing we offer, uh, unless it's a very complicated multimodal shipping, like one of our customer is going to ship their product to San Luis from China, and we're trying to figure out like what is the cheapest way? Either ship it to New York or to California, then do a trail, or shipping to you know one of the ports and then do a truck with cost calculation. That might take longer, but if it's a standard shipment, let's say you have 500 kilogram or like 700 kilogram shipment from Ningbo or Shanghai from China to ONT8 Amazon warehouse or to New York, any location by sea or by air, this kind of quotation we offer within 12 to 24 hours wherever you are located. And then you don't have to be a member in our website. You just send us an email. It's sales at forsket.com. Uh, we send you quotation within 12 to 24 hours. If you want to book the space with us, then we create an account in our website that you can go to our digital platform and you start seeing your quotation online and you start seeing the shipping pickup date. We contact your supplier and now we update in the system when it's going to be the pickup date. If you have any question, you can send us a message in the system, in the platform, and then we reply again within two to four hours. So that's what we're trying to do. Very fast communication and very fast price offering. And then that price is going to be valid depending on the, the type of the shipment. But <clears throat> you will see all the details. And if something happens, you know, when I mentioned we're transparent with the pricing, Sometimes people have a small issues with the final invoice values, not only with us, but in the industry. That's something I'd like to talk to you about. 
uh, the packing loss you receive from the factory may not be the actual final weight or final measurement. So that's a that's something that um, everyone should be careful with their freight forwarder or whoever they're working with. Whenever they get the packing list from the factory, things might change, like you know, 10 kilos, 20 kilos, and then the quotation updates, obviously, in that case. But otherwise, our price stays there, and then you can use it, you accept it yourself. Uh, the communication, the flexible payment terms, I would say, it differentiates us. Most of the Chinese freight forwarders are charging it upfront. So you don't know whether your product is going to be delivered or not. If they have an insurance or not, they never mention it if you don't ask. All of our shipments, we include the insurance fee, anything happens. And then, as I mentioned, the flexible payment term and the online digital tracking. If you have, Brian, let's say three active shipments at a time, two of them are going to Amazon warehouse, one of them going to a third party, and they all depart at a very similar time. You're like, oh, every time you need to ask your uh, freight forwarder, hey, where's my shipment? Where's my shipment? When's it's gonna come? When's it's gonna arrive? That's a little bit of a problem you know, in this world to track the shipments by email or by communication. So the best part about our tracking system is that you can see which shipment is going to which destination and when it's gonna to arrive to the port and what's the process. So that's, I think one thing that FBA sellers or e-commerce sellers like to know like day to basic, where's their shipment at? Okay. Two last questions, you know, and we'll wrap it up for the day here. So um, biggest mistake that you've seen brand owners make this year when it comes to shipping and logistics? Okay. Uh, nobody was prepared. Um, so a lot of people keep their inventory in China. And uh, whenever they have limits in Amazon, they try to ship it from China and, and things delay. Uh, so that's why actually we brought in the, the warehouse solution in here for us in New Jersey and in California. Um, <clears throat> because let's say, again, you're selling a microphone, you have 2000 units per month sales. And then the more you sell, Amazon gives you more limit to send an inventory in. And right. if you don't have ready shipment in, in, in US or in destination, like, you know, you're selling in Australia or UK, if you don't have ready inventory, then you cannot actually ship it that quantity on time. So some of the people <clears throat> didn't figure out in the beginning and they start keeping their ready inventory in China and ship it slowly to FBA, then they became like out of inventory because of the delay. So that's something that, the inventory management is very important. So we don't even talk about anymore like freight or logistics. Basically, I start saying it's supply chain. For FBA sellers, supply chain might be very professional. Hey, we're not a multinational company. We're not like, you know, Pepsi, Coca-Cola. Why are you talking about supply chain? But if you are selling in one or two different marketplaces, let's say UK and Canada and US, and you have two suppliers and five SQ, you already probably have like, 10 shipments at a time to different locations. So that's why it's very important to plan it right. A lot of people, they book the space late and they did not have a backup plan to have the 3PL warehouse. So now everybody's trying yeah. to set this up. I think that's so maybe one of the other things gonna be more for, important for next year. Right. So probably one of the best things you could do is as a brand owner is that before you even place the order with the manufacturer is have this conversation with a company like yours to make sure that you understand the, the logistics, the timing, the costs involved. Um, and obviously any kind of delays or bottlenecks that you need to be aware of at that particular time of the week, of the month, of the year, uh, so that uh, so that you can, you can expect it. You're not surprised by it, right? Absolutely. Okay. How can people get a hold of you? Obviously, you've got the shirt on today as far as the spelling right. of Forsket, yes. Forsket.com. How, yes. how do you prefer them to, to reach out to you to um, have that? We have, we have all the contact information uh, in Forsket.com. Uh, they can reach us out by phone, by email. They can sign up to our website. Uh, especially for your listeners, uh, I would like to offer $100 uh, special uh, international shipping bonus. Uh, if they want to use, they can just mention your name uh, or your company that. name. Uh, hey, I, I, I heard about this, you know, in here and uh, I want to use your service and we're going to give them a $100 discount immediately from their shipping invoice. So they can contact us. You know, we don't have to work. I love talking to people. I love to tell, telling people like, you know, uh, helping them, especially with the sourcing uh, in China, outside of China. A lot of people start talking about talking about it. We already have like one hour. I don't know how did it go that fast, but 
you know, a lot of people talking about like alternative ways to sourcing products, how they can go, which market. I think that could be a completely different session. Yep. But if anybody has a problem or with their suppliers, manufacturers, uh, sourcing issues, or, you know, had the problem with the customer, local deliveries, uh, we have the full service, like, you know, full international door-to-door -door shipping, as well as warehousing. Uh, not only in US, but also in other marketplaces like, you know, Japan, Australia, uh, Europe, UK, uh, they can come back to us and then say, hey, you know, I have this issue. Can you help me with it? I'm happy to help, you know. Fantastic. Uh, Barack Yoga, thank you very much for joining me here today with uh, Under the Canopy. Uh, Barack Yoga is, is with Forsket and it probably is a conversation that you should have with him and his team uh, regarding before you order your next container shipment. <laughs> From, oh, yes. uh, from any location, including before he hits the forty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, before you, you show that out, uh, just to make sure you get all the timing and logistics, especially getting ready here for Q four. You've got to know what your timing is and then how you're going to absorb that. Uh, you got you need to know the math basically. <laughs> I hope everybody how you're going to did their that. Q four order already. Yeah. Now I appreciate your time on this. Thank you so much for being a wealth of information. Um, and um, yeah, we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Brian, having me here.